So these are the three verses that describe the contents of the first and second canto. Now we are in the third canto. Third canto is uh, essentially beginning to describe Shukadeva Goswami's answers to Parishit Maharaj's many many questions. In the beginning, Parishit Maharaj had only two questions. When he first met rather welcome Shukadeva Goswami walked into the assembly where Parishit Maharaj was fasting and preparing for death. Then two questions Parishit Maharaj asked Shukadeva Goswami. Does somebody know what are the two questions? What is the duty of a person who is about to die? That the first question he asked. What is the duty of a person who is about to die? Then second question. In general, what are the duties of a person who is taking the human form of mind? So these two questions, Shukadeva Goswami answers. And then Shukadeva Goswami also describes Parikshit Maharaj's further questions, answers further questions. So next he asks, how does the Supreme Lord create, maintain and destroy this material world? Even though he is completely aloof from it, he is completely transcendental to this material world. But still, how does he do it, remaining aloof from it? Which means that nobody else can do something without being involved. Without coming in contact, nobody else can do something with this material world. Only Krishna has gone that power. That is because Krishna employs his internal potency. Krishna employs his internal potency for all his activities. And what does the internal potency do? It shields Krishna as well as his pure devotees from the influence of the external potency. When we chant Hare Krishna, we are doing so under the shelter of Krishna's internal potency. In the Hare Krishna mantra itself, which word represents the internal potency? Hare. So, Simply by invoking, uh, simply by chanting Hare Krishna, that word Hare invokes the internal potency of Krishna. And under the shelter of the internal potency, you are completely shielded from the influence of the external potency. So, uh, that is the question Parishit asks specifically in the fourth chapter of the second canto. So the first three chapters of the second canto describe the answers to uh, Parishit's first two questions. Then in the fourth chapter onwards, briefly, Parishit Maharaj, I mean, Shukadeva Goswami answers the question about how does the Lord create, maintain, and destroy. So the conversation between Narada and Brahma, that conversation is referred by Shri Goswami. And Narada asks the same question which you are asking me, he asks Brahma. How does the Lord create, maintain and destroy the whole creation? And then Shri Goswami cited Brahma's answer to Narada. In while telling that answer, Shukraya Goswami also mentioned how Brahma is able to actually uh, remain aloof himself 
by always remembering Krishna. What does Brahma do to remember Krishna on this? Seventh chapter of the second canto. Scheduled incarnation with specific functions. So Brahma remembers or meditates or thinks about the wonderful pastimes of the Lord in his various incarnations. Otherwise, the Supreme Lord, his activities, his form, his qualities, everything is something to do with the spiritual world, it has nothing to do with the material world. So, material world, how do we remember or see or talk about? or discuss, when he comes to the material world, then he incarnates. So that's why incarnations are so important. Already in the first canto, the sages of have asked Sutta Goswami, kindly tell us about the various wonderful activities he performs in his multi-incarnations. Six questions, first six questions, in the beginning of the first canto, first chapter. One of the questions was, please tell us about the activities he performs. His activities are wonderful. So tell us about his activities when he incarnates in this world, in so many incarnations. So Brahma tells Narada that I simply meditate upon the wonderful pastimes, activities of the Supreme Lord when he comes to the world. And in that way, I always remain aloof. Rupa Goswami says, in our practice of bhakti, the most powerful way of always remembering Krishna is Leela Smaran. That's why Bhagavatam is full of descriptions of Krishna's incarnations, uh, past times in his incarnations. And detailed description about Krishna's own pastimes when he personally comes. Then can. Detailed description. Very detailed description of his pastimes. So that Leela Smaran is very, very powerful. To way to actually remember Krishna. Uh, Krishna's instruction, most confidential instruction in the Bhagavad Gita. Topmost instruction. Most confidential instruction. What is that? Hmm? This is the words 18.64. No. 18.64 is not Manmana or Manmana. Sarva Gurkhya Tamam Bhu Yaha Shunome Paramam Bachaha Ishto Si Me Dudamiti Tato Shanti. So many instructions Krishna has given to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. But he says, now I am going to tell you my most confidential instruction. Sarva Bhukhya Tamam. Most confidential. Shunume Paramam Vachaha. My topmost instruction. Supreme instruction. And what is that instruction? Manmana, Bhavaman, Bhakto, Manmana, think of me always. So how do you think of Krishna on this? Rupa Goswami says, Dila Smarai. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to facilitate this Dila Smarai, what does Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say? Five instructions, the most important instruction for Dila Smarai. Bhagavad Regularly hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Regularly, every day, hear Bhagavatam. That is, making it possible for us to do Vilas. And in that way, constantly think of Krishna. But one more instruction Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given, which is even more fundamental for constantly remembering Krishna. No, chanting Hare Krishna. Chanting Hare Krishna. Chanting Hare Krishna is also the way to constantly remember Krishna. 
In the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada mentions, Krishna says, one who remembers me at the time of death, very easily attains my abode, comes to my kingdom, attains me. Eight chapter, fifth verse, what is the verse?
Narada as Yasadeva to compile the Srimad Bhagavatam. But after giving that instruction to compile Bhagavatam, he gives the gist of the Bhagavatam as instructions to Yasadeva. So what is the fifth chapter of the first canto? Srimad Bhagavatam to Vyasadeva. So the gist of the Bhagavatam is there in Narada's instructions to Vyasadeva. It's also there in uh, the four verses spoken by the Supreme Lord to Brahma at the beginning of creation. Several places in the Bhagavatam you'll find the gist of the Bhagavatam. The twelfth chapter, Canto twelfth chapter, is the topics of the Bhagavatam summarized. So you want to know what is there in the Bhagavatam in summary? Twelfth Canto, twelfth chapter. The entire chapter. That is also the summary of the Bhagavatam. So, uh, Shukade Goswami begins to speak the Bhagavatam proper. Because so many questions Parikshit has asked. So, while speaking the Bhagavatam, Shukade Goswami refers to different conversations that have already taken place on the subject matter of the Bhagavatam between great devotees or the Supreme Lord and his devotee or between uh, Two devotees. So, first of all, he refers to the conversation between Vidura and Uddhava. Vidura and Uddhava. So, here he begins to describe how Vidura met Uddhava. That is the uh, uh, background for this. Third canto, beginning, first chapter. The chapter is questions by Vidura. Vidura asks questions from Uddhava in the beginning. He means Uddhava. So the background will be given how Vidura left uh, Hastinapura uh, and uh, here it is said this particular verse we are talking about. See the first verse, after renouncing his prosperous home and entering the forest, King Vidura, the great devotee, asked this question of his grace, my prayer Rishi. Which question? The question of Parikshit asked, Shukadeva Goswami. What was Parikshit asked, Shukadeva Goswami? Same question was asked by Vidura from Maitreya Rishi. But before Vidura met Maitreya, he met Uddhava. So now the remaining uh, uh, description will be till he meets um, Maitreya, uh, the conversation between Vidura and Uddhava will be described. There will be uh, three chapters. Then the fourth chapter will be Vidura approach my prayer. So here Shukare Goswami is telling this question which Parikshit asked is also was also asked by uh, Vidura to my prayer. Now about Vidura meeting my prayer, the background. So this verse says that first of all, where was Vidura staying? He was staying in Hastinapura in the residential house of the Pandavas. Now, the speciality about the residential house of the Pandavas was that Sri Krishna, the Supreme Lord, the Lord of everything, he acted as, apart from so many other roles Krishna played in relation to Pandavas, Acted as the minister of the Pandavas. What is the Sanskrit written here? Mantrakrit. Yetva ayam mantrakrit vo. 
Krishna is so kind in the first canto, 16th chapter, there is a verse which describes when Parikshit was traveling everywhere, he used to hear about the glories of Krishna being described by so many people, recollecting the fact that Krishna was so kind to the Pandavas. What was he to the Pandavas? For that, Parikshit heard wherever he is to visit. That Krishna acted for the Pandavas as their most confidential friend, as their minister, as their messenger, as their night watchman. Night watchman. As their well-wisher, as their savior, as their advisor, as everything for the Pandavas. So when Parikshit heard this, he had tears in his eyes. My Lord is so kind upon his devotees. Krishna is so kind to his devotees that he gives himself up to the devotees. What does Kunti say about Krishna? He is the property of those devotees who are completely impoverished, completely impoverished. What is that verse in the prayers of Queen Kunti? You recite that once every day. He is known by those who are Akinjana. But there is another verse. Namo Akinjana Vittaya. Namo Akinjana Vittaya. He is the property. Krishna says, I have no freedom. If somebody says, Krishna, I want you. He says, I have no freedom. I am the property of my pure devotees. Krishna was so much um, uh, happy and pleased with the service of the gopis in Vrindavan. It tells the gopis, I have nothing in my possession that I can give you in return for the service you are giving me. So, so saying, Krishna says, I give myself unto you. I have become your property. That's why Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, if you want Krishna, you approach his pure devotee. And in one song he says, Vaishnava Thakura. Krishna se tomara, Krishna dite paro, tomara shakati achye. Your devotee of Krishna, he has Krishna as his property. So he can give Krishna to him. Prabhupada says, your devotee says, here, Krishna take. So easily he can give Krishna to him. Your devotee. So Prabhupada is such a devotee of Krishna. He has got Krishna as his property. So if you want Krishna, Prabhupada can give you this kind of So, uh, that Krishna who is the property of the pure devotees, first canto describes essentially, what is that in the first canto essentially? It describes how the Pandavas actually had Krishna as their property. So here it is said, Sri Krishna, the Lord of everything, acted as your minister. He used to enter that house. Which house? The residential house of the Pandavas, as if it were his own. Pauravendra Grimam Hitva, getting up the house of Duryodhana, even though it was very, very opulent, 
प्रवेश आत्मसात्कृतम he is to enter the pandavas house as if it were his own house atmasatkritam it's my house so what is the significance of shukadev goswami telling in this verse that krishna is to enter the pandavas house as if it were his own the gaudiya vaishnava philosophy of chintya veda veda tattva says that Anything which satisfies the senses of Supreme Lord Krishna is also Krishna. And the water I can go. Eight, fifty, eight, fifty minutes. So there is no difference between Krishna and that which satisfies the senses of Krishna. Because of this, Kethena Mahaprabhu says, "Tad dhamu dandavanam." Vrindavan, which is the personal abode of Krishna, is not different from Krishna. Therefore, it is also as worshipable as Krishna. It is as worshipable as Krishna. That's why he takes the dust of Vrindavan and put it on our head. No difference between the dust of Vrindavan and the dust at the lotus feet of Krishna. No difference. So uh, this is the Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva. Mayavadis, when they talk of non-difference, they come to the conclusion non-different means everything is Brahman. So there is only Brahman, nothing else is there. Or we need not bother about anything else, we need not only bother about Brahman. But our understanding is Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. Siddhanta, conclusion, it's not just philosophy, it's conclusion. Siddhanta, uh, Western philosophy is not necessarily always conclusive, generally it is inconclusive. They put forward so many philosophies or theories or speculations or observations, whatever it is, without any conclusion. But India, the Vedic culture, always, generally, philosophy has got a conclusion. Even the atheistic philosophies in India have got conclusion. Siddhanta. What is that? Siddhanta. Anta means conclusion. So Vyasadeva calls his philosophy as Vedanta. What is that? Vedanta. That's why this philosophy is called Vedanta philosophy. What is the Vedanta? The conclusion of the entire Vedic literature, Vedic knowledge. Krishna already has told what is the conclusion of all the Vedas in the Bhagavad Gita. What is that? Vedaishya sarvay ameva vedyam. From all the Vedas, the ultimate goal of the Vedas. All the Vedas, Krishna is to be known. Krishna is to be understood. So that Krishna, as the goal of the Vedas, is the most confidential. Another very very confidential thing revealed in the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam. But in the Mayavadis, they study Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita they don't study generally. But of late, even Mayavadis have started studying the Bhagavatam also. Shankaracharya did not touch the Bhagavatam. But Shankaracharya's followers now try to study or comment on the Bhagavad Gita. In any case, their commentary or their study of the Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavad Gita, conclusion is that the aim or ultimate goal is impersonal Brahman. Impersonal Brahman. That is the Mayavad philosophy also. But Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita about the impersonal Brahman. What does Krishna say? Brahmano hi pratishta aham. I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman. What does Bhagavatam say about Brahman in relation to Krishna? Hmm? Varan 
अनंति तत्व विधा तत्व परमात्मेति भगवान But that's not the only description. 
description of the absolute truth. It's not only description. So absolute truth is described as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. And the Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam declare Bhagavan to be the highest realization, complete realization, perfect realization. That's it. So, based on this understanding, here it is said, the house of the Pandavas was as good as Vrindavan and Vipra should not have given up that place of transcendental bliss. Should not have given up. So therefore, Prabhupada is telling the purport, which will be later on, Prabhupada is telling the purport. The reason for splitting the house was not exactly family misunderstanding. It looked like, it will be described later, that Duryodhana insulted Vidura. Apparently, Vidura became very much aggrieved. He felt very bad. He said, I am leaving this place and going away. So, that was not the real reason why he left. So, there was no reason for him to leave that house, which Krishna identified as his own. So, the real reason was he took advantage of family misunderstanding in order to meet Rishi Maitreya. Not to meet Maitreya Rishi. That will be explained in detail. So, immediately Parikshit, next verse. Where and when did the meeting and discussion take place between Saint Dudra and his place country? Kindly apply my Lord and describe this verse. See, every stage, even though the questions are already asked by Parishya, whole lot of questions, 8th chapter, 2nd canto. But, in between, Parishya will make the discussion more interesting by asking certain details, which also shows that he is very attentively hearing Shukadeva Goswami. Even the sake of time Sharanya, they hear it from Sutta Goswami, the Bhagavatam. But in between, they will ask certain questions which makes the conversation very, very interesting. They are also very alert. So, the Bhagavatam is presented as question and answer. So, you should carefully Note the questions and then the answers. This way the topics will be more interesting. Parishit Maharaj, as Jukadeh Goswami tells Parishit Maharaj, you are making the subject matter of Bhagavatam very, very interesting by your questions. The beginning of the Bhagavatam, Jukadeh Goswami opens his mouth and begins to speak. What does he say? Varya Neshate Prashnaha. Varya is the best of inquiries. The question you are asking. Why? Because it leads to discussion about Krishna. Even Sukhupa Swami says all the questions asked by Satan and Sharanya, what does he say? Uh, the fifth uh, verse of the second chapter of the first candle. Munaya Sadh Prashtoham Bhavadir Loka Mangadam Yet Krita Krishna Sam Prashno Yena Masu Prasidati Same thing, uh, Shikari Goswami says, Varila Nishate Krishna. Second canto, uh, first chapter, I think the first verse.
Hari Ani, that verse, Karnamrita. Hari Ani, Shate Prashna, Kruto Loka Hitam Rupa. Kruto Loka Hitam Rupa. Atma Vit Sammata. Atma Vit Sammata. Kumsam. Shroda Vyadi Shuyakpara. Shroda Vyadi Shuyakpara. Translation. Shri Shukadev Goswami said, My dear King, your question is glorious because it is very beneficial to all kinds of people. The answer to this question is the prime subject matter for hearing and it is approved by all transcendentalists. It is approved by all transcendentalists, prime subject matter for hearing, it is beneficial for all classes of people. That is the kind of question Parishit Maharaj has. Remember the two questions? What the duty of a person is about to die and in general what are the duties of the human being. So, Shukriya was on the very pleased to answer these two questions. So, uh, Parikshit Maharaj in between will ask some questions. And uh, the sage of Anishanani had by Shaunaka Rishi, which is Shaunaka Adayama. So, they also ask some questions in between throughout. So many conversations will be referred to. Sometimes devotees say it becomes very confusing. Don't worry about who is speaking to whom. See the question and the answer. Whoever has asked the question, what is the answer? And it's a parampara system that nothing new is actually being told. Same thing what was told. What is Krishna saying in the Bhagavad Gita? Sarevaya maya tegya yoga prokta puratanaha imam vivasvate yogam proktavan aham abhyayam This imperishable science of yoga I spoke to Sun God millions of years back and evam parampara prakta it is coming down in parampara but kale niyamata yoga nashta parandapa it got broken the parampara is broken therefore Eva Ayam, say Eva Ayam, Maya Te Adya, today I am going to speak to you. The same science of yoga, yoga prokta puratana, which I spoke formerly, same thing I am going to speak to you now. So there is nothing new to be told. That is the parampara system. So here you can see, uh, Shukadev Goswami is referring, same question is asked by Vidura too. Maitreya and he will cite Maitreya's reply. That's my reply. Nothing new I have to tell. Same question was asked and reply was given. So this is Parampara system. Authoritative reply. Citing the previous authorities. And the previous, 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 we go on tracing, it goes to ultimately Krishna. That's why we say Krishna is the source of all the Vedas. Last point. Which verse in Gaurita says Krishna is the source of all the Vedas? Huh? Vedanta Vedanta. No. Vedanta Krit means he is compiler of Vedanta Sutra. And Veda Veda means he is knower of the Vedas. Okay, he knows the Vedas, but where does he say? Where does Bhagavad Gita say that he is the one who knows the source of the Vedas? Anar Bhavanti Bhutani, those two verses. Parjanya Nanda Sambhavaha, Yajna Bhavati Parjanya, Yajna Karma Samudbhavaha, Karma Brahmo Bhavam Vidhi. Brahmana refers to Vedas. Karma Brahmo Bhavam Vidhi. Prescribed duties are mentioned in the Vedas and Brahma, Brahma Akshara Samudbhavam. Vedas, where are they coming from? They are coming from the Supreme Lord. Translation, read translation. 3.14 and 15, correct? 15 can read the translation. Regulated activities are prescribed in the Vedas. Vedas. And the Vedas are directly manifested from the Supreme Personality. Vedas are directly manifested from the Supreme Personality. Consequently, 
consequently the all pervading transcendence okay. is eternally situated in action. That's another point. But the main thing is that Vedas are coming from Krishna. Sometimes these uh, Mayavadis, they say, we don't accept Smriti, Puranas and Itihas, we don't accept that. We only accept the original Vedas. Even if you accept only the original Vedas, where are the Vedas coming from? They are coming from the Supreme Personality of God. And that is where the Vedas, Prabhupada is quoting that. In that uh, purport to 3.15, you read that later. The Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, the Sama Veda, Atharva Veda came out of the breathing of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the beginning of creation. What does Bhagavatam say? Beginning of creation, how the Vedas came into this world? Tene Brahma Hridaya Adhika Vaye. Krishna revealed the way knowledge to Lord Brahma in the heart. So Brahma is the first created being, there is nobody else. Only Vishnu was there, Supreme Lord, and He created Brahma. And after Brahma is born, Brahma says things, I don't know what I am supposed to do, who am I, where am I, what is my source. Then Vishnu reveals to Him His source, His purpose of being born, what He is supposed to do, the knowledge for that, everything Vishnu gives. So that time, Brahma Vishnu reveals the very knowledge to heart of from within the heart. Hmm. So, uh, it is the Supreme Lord who is the source of all knowledge, all Vedas, all the uh, scriptures, in the source. So, Parampara means we trace it to the beginning. In the beginning, it is the Supreme Lord. Always Parampara begins with Krishna. Okay, so the Trash in the Bhagavad Gita, 